Okay, this is section 13-1. This is the last chapter. So this first section is going to be on linear measure. This entire chapter is on measurement. So we're going to talk about things like perimeter, volume, surface area, area, or sorry, volume, things like that. So we start with linear measure. Now, as the name implies, this is measurement in a one direction, okay, one dimensional measurement, so line, linear. So measurement itself is a three-step process. You pick an attribute to measure. Do you want to measure the length, the width, the perimeter, the volume, the area, the surface area? You know, so you pick an attribute to measure. Then you have to pick a unit. You want to pick a reasonable unit. If you're going to measure the length of this pencil, you probably do not need to use the unit of feet or yards, right? You want to pick a smaller unit. Then you want to determine how many units are necessary to, now this is where it depends on what attribute you choose. If you choose to measure the length, then how many units are needed to run the length of that object? If you're talking about perimeter, how many units are required to go around the object? If you're talking about volume, how many um, things are needed to fill the object or to cover the object if we're talking about area? Now, it's actually best to start kids off with non-standard units. You can measure with anything. You can measure with a pencil, um, a stick, a shoe, your hand, a book. You can measure with anything. Okay. Now, let's just suppose, let's look at example one. You tell your class to measure the width of their desk using their pencil. Here are some of their results. Brianna says that her desk is four pencils wide. Chanel says that her desk is three pencils wide. Rudy says his desk is six pencils wide. So Rudy proclaims that his desk is the widest. But then you tell the class the desks are all the same width. So why are the answers different? Do you have any ideas before I give you guys the answer? Well, it depends on the size of their pencils. Since they're using a non-standard unit, you know, Rudy's desk being six pencils wide could mean that his pencil is this long, whereas Brianna's only, you know, four pencils wide Maybe her pencil's that long, so it would take fewer of them to run the length of the desk. Now, Chanel, being three pencils wide, says that her pencil's the longest, probably double what Rudy's is. So that's kind of the problem with using a non-standard unit. Now, what we can do is you could have the kids all measure with the same pencil. Then you would be able to determine, you know, um, comparatively, you know, if there was a, a widest desk in the classroom, you could tell that, you know, if you guys all used the same length pencil. So when you're comparing measurements, you want to either use a standard unit of measure or use the same non-standard item for each. Um, for each measurement. Now, non-standard units evolved into standard units. Okay, standard units are the ones that we kind of all agree upon as to, you know, how long they are. So, we have the English units of length. So, one of the non-standard units that you're probably familiar with that evolved into a standard unit is feet. You know, people using their feet to measure, to like walk you know, the length of a room to try to get, you know, a measurement of it. All right, so we have these conversions or these relationships between the units. Here's our English units of measure and their abbreviations. We have inches, feet, yard, and miles. Mile is M-I. If you use just M, that's meters. So there's 12 inches and one foot. There's three feet in one yard. There's 5,280 feet in a mile. 
and 1,760 yards make up a mile. Now just so you have a frame of reference for these, it's good to have a frame of reference. You know, how long is an inch? Some people have no idea. And the, the woman that cuts my hair can verify this, that people have no idea how long an inch is. Because they'll come in and they're like, oh, I want you to take off like six inches. She takes off six inches and they're crying in her chair. They're like, I didn't know it was that much. You know, some people think that an inch is just like, you know, ooh, a little bitty bit. An inch is about the length of a small paper clip. Let's see if I have one. I tried to draw one. That's kind of realistic, right? You guys were probably thinking, man, that's a janky looking paper clip. Things seem better days. But yeah, so, you know, a small paper clip as opposed to a big one. I'm digging around. There's a big paper clip. So yeah, the length of a small paper clip is about an inch. It's also, um, like on your finger, it's this distance right here between your knuckles. So it's the distance between this knuckle and this one. On my finger, that's about an inch long. A foot, well, you know, I bet you can probably figure out that that one's probably about the size of a foot. Fun fact, a men's size 13 is about 11.6 inches long. So, you know, even if you've got big old clown feet, it's still not quite 12 inches. One yard. Now, you probably have seen a yardstick. My dog is so itchy. You hear all that jingle and jangling over there? Yeah, that's her. Quite down over there. So, one yard. Um, you've probably seen a yardstick before, so you may have that kind of frame of reference in your head. Um, for me, it was... As a kid, I'm showing my age here. Um, as a kid, I would go buy fabric with my grandmother, and she would always measure out yards of fabric by taking the um, the fabric roll, and she would always hold it in the middle of her chest, and she'd pull out enough fabric to where it went to the end of her outstretched arm. So, if you could imagine from the middle of your chest to the end of the fingers on your outstretched arm. That's about a yard. And that's how my grandmother used to always measure yards of fabric. Whenever she bought fabric, they would, um, that was just kind of a standard way of measuring there. All right, so let's do some conversions. So I did the first one for us just to show you. 96 feet is how many yards? I don't want you to play the game of you know, oh, there's three feet in a yard. Do I multiply by three? Do I divide by three? I don't want you to have to play that game, okay? Instead, we're going to use this blue thing right here. This is what's called a conversion factor. And I think your book calls it like conversion analysis or unit analysis, something super sexy like that. But we know that one yard and three feet are the same thing, right? So if you have something divided by itself, that's one. So this right here is just us multiplying by one. So that this 96 feet ends up being the same thing. These are exactly the same, just one of them's wearing lipstick and a dress, so it just looks slightly different. And this one's wearing, you know, jogging pants and a hair tie. Now, why did I choose to multiply by one yard over three feet units? So see how the feet right here are on top? Now I say on top because you know that every number can be written as a fraction, right? If we have this whole number, we can look at that as being like over one. So feet on top, feet on bottom, the feet units cancel. And I'm left with the unit of yards up there. 96 times 1 and then divided by 3 is 32 yards. So this conversion factor is going to come from these right here. And then the way that you multiply them is going to depend on your unit. If I was converting yards to feet, then this would be flipped. So I'll do some examples to show you. But really, we're just going to multiply by this conversion factor every time. 
All right, so eight feet to inches. Now, if you can do this in your head, that's fantastic, okay? That's awesome. I just wanna give you something that will always work that you can use just in case you can't do them in your head. So we start off with eight feet. So we're gonna multiply by its conversion factor. Now feet here is on the top, so I need feet to be on the bottom so that those will cancel. And on the top, I want inches. So what's the conversion between inches and feet? Well, we know that there are 12 inches in one foot. So that means my feet unit will cancel and I get eight times 12 divided by one, which is what, 80, 16, so 96 inches. That answer was 32 yards. This is 96 inches. Now, if you were able to just say, hey, I know I just got to multiply it by 12 and you got 96, that's awesome. Okay, so this is a good opportunity to pause the video and see if you can do these conversions. Yards are in a mile. I don't memorize that one. I know how many feet are in a mile, but I never bother memorizing the yards. Oops. So let's put back here. 1760 is how many yards are in a mile. So I want my yards to cancel, so my yards are going to go down here. I want miles left. And then we said that one mile was 1,760 yards. The yard unit cancels. I'm left with miles on top. This does matter, okay? The order of where you put these does matter. If you put yards on top and then miles on the bottom, you're gonna get yards squared over miles, which is a hot mess. All right, so we're gonna take 7240, and then we're gonna divide by 1760. All right, we get something that's kind of messy there. So let's just round it. So that was about 4.5. 1-1 one, one miles, and if we wanted to write that as a fraction, that was 181 over 44 miles. Perfectly okay with you guys just rounding it, but if you wanted to write as a fraction, all I did was just hit that little toggle key down here. Um, I don't know if you guys still have the, the TI-30. I know some of you guys had that for Math 200. Um, if you guys are using the 84, I just happened to grab the other one out of my drawer first. So if you did 7240 divided by 1760, so we get that, hit Math, Enter twice, and there's the reduced fraction. Forget that I used the TI-30 there. I just happened to grab it out of my drawer first. I got a feeling most of you guys have this from the statistics that we did. Okay, 1.52 miles. And we're converting that to feet. So we want the miles to cancel. So the miles are going to go on the bottom, and we want feet to be left, so the feet are going to go on the top. That conversion is one mile is 5,280 feet. If you don't have that memorized, that's okay. It's on here for you. It's back here for you. All right, so those units of miles will cancel and we just have to multiply 1.52 times 5280 and we get 8025.6 all right 
So the last two, if you haven't already done these, pause the video and try to do these, try to work ahead of me. These are a little bit different. How many inches are in a yard? Maybe you don't know that one, but that's okay. If you do, that's great. If you don't, that's okay too. We know that there are 12 inches in one foot. So that conversion factor will get rid of the inches and convert it to feet. We want it to go to yards though. All right, well I can multiply by another conversion factor that will convert it from feet to yards. So this feet's on top, so I'm gonna put feet on the bottom here. I wanna end up with yards. Now what's the conversion between feet and yards? Well, three feet is equivalent to one yard. That gets rid of the feet. Now, if you knew that there's just 36 inches in a yard, that's great. You could have just multiplied by one yard over 36. We would have ended up in the exact same place. I just wanted to show you one where we could convert using um, two conversion factors. All right, so this is 48 times one times one, all divided by 12 times three. So we end up with 48 divided by 36, which is one and a third, or four thirds. Oops, let me squeeze in my units there. miles to inches. All right, 0.4 miles. How many inches is that? Are you so before you start doing these, you should ask yourself, are you expecting a bigger number or a smaller number than what you start with? So like 48 inches. Are you expecting it to be a lot of yards or not very many? Well, not very many, right? If we think of 48 inches, that's like four rulers. Yeah, 48 inches, I mean, I'm like, how tall am I? <laughs> I'm 5'5", five five, so I'm 65 inches tall. So you shouldn't expect it to be that many yards. So, okay, that seems reasonable. It's, you know, it's good to have that idea in your head because if you end up with something like, you know, 48 inches ends up being, I don't know, you know, 1,728 yards. Um, that seems a little much. And that tends to happen when you accidentally multiply when you should divide, or vice versa. Okay, so anyway, back at the home front here. We got 0.4 miles, so 4 tenths of a mile. I don't know the conversion straight from miles to inches, but I can convert miles to feet and then feet to inches. So I can go from miles to feet. Now miles is in the bottom so that these units will cancel. I know that one mile is 5,280 feet. Sorry about that, I wrote that kind of small. That'll get rid of the unit of miles. Now to get rid of the unit of feet, and change that to inches, I have that 12 inches is one foot. And now my dog thirsts. And she's part basset hound, so she's got like big old floppy jowls. So she's a messy, messy drinker. So she's like slurp, blurp, 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 blurp in there. All right, so anyway, we got these uh, feet. You probably wouldn't have even noticed it if I hadn't pointed it out, right? Now now you're listening in the background for the, for the dog who's about to come out and water yarf all over the rug. 
All right, so now we're ended up with units. So we're going to take 0.4 times 52a times 12. We're expecting 4 tenths of a mile is a lot of inches, right? Because that's a really big unit, and that's a really super tiny unit. So let's do 0.4 times 52.80 times 12, and yeah, we get a big old honking number out of this. We get 25,344 inches. Is that a good drink? <laughs> All right, so that was for the English units of measure. Now we have the metric units of measure. Is that, why is that so blurry? The metric units are based on powers of 10. The metric system is a very kind of awesome system. It's very natural. You know, we're used to our money being in, um, you know, powers of 10. So it kind of makes sense that our units would be as well. But alas, the United States and the UK will not adopt it. So we're all stuck using the English units of measurement. Someday though, someday we're going to go to metric. I can feel it. <laughs> all right, so the metric system. I've drawn these stair steps to give you a visual um, of how these change. With the metric units, we have certain prefixes that mean things. We have like the milli, centi, deci, deca, hecto, kilo. Those prefixes go with a lot of metric units. Like, say, for length, it would be meters. For capacity, you know, for, for uh, liquid volume, it would be liters, like milliliters. Um, grams, milligrams, kilograms. That's the units of mass. So these prefix, prefixes are fixed. The base changes based on what attribute you're measuring. Okay, so, and again, I did these so that you could see that the milli is the smallest and the kilo is the largest. Now, I was taught to remember these by the little mnemonic device of King Hector Dr. Bakes Delicious Chocolate Muffins. So that you can kind of... King Hector Dactor bakes delicious cream or chocolate muffins. Now the Dactor was the DA because that's the abbreviation for DECA so that it can be um, differentiated from DECI. So the unit I listed down here, the symbol, the relationship to the base. So if this is the meter, is the base unit, then the deca meter is 10 meters. The hectometer is 100 meters. The kilometer is 1,000. Okay, so typically kilo means 1,000. Then we have these, the decimeter, as in decimal, right, one-tenth. Centi is a prefix meaning one one-hundredth. Milli being one one-thousandth. So the relationship to the base, you can see here, if the base unit is our one at 10 to the zero, you can see how these increase by powers of 10, and these decrease by powers of 10. The metric units actually came about from the French, right? So they wanted a more natural unit than the English. The English ones are just kind of random, right? You know, 12 inches and 3 feet and all that other stuff. That just wasn't natural enough. So if you take the distance along the circle, along a great circle, from the North Pole to the equator, not the straight line through the Earth distance, but the distance along the curve of the Earth. If you take that distance and you subdivide it into 10 million parts, you get one meter. So that's what we mean by natural, like it's found in nature. Frames of reference, because we don't use the metric system in this country, a lot of people have no idea how, how much a meter is. If I ask you, oh, about how many meters tall are you? You have no idea. You'd be like, I don't know, I could be six meters tall. I might be, you know, one third meter tall. Who knows? How long's a meter? Nobody knows. 
So I've got some frames of reference here for you. One millimeter is itty bitty, okay? It's the width of the tip of a paper clip. Where's that paper clip? Put it away. So I mean like the tip, the tip right there, that little teeny bitty little tip. Here, I'm just gonna bend it, sacrifice it here. That little bitty tip right there, the width of that is a millimeter. Look at that, it's itty bitty. See how teeny tiny it is? Enlarge for your viewing pleasure here. A centimeter, that's about the width of a plain M&M, you know, milk chocolate M&M. Um, it's also about the width of your pointer finger. So that's about a centimeter. Now, <laughs> I, I think everybody in this class is female. So uh, I'm about to make you guys extremely uncomfortable. Because a centimeter is about the width of your fingernail, when you are pregnant and in labor and they measure you and they say, okay, well, you're five centimeters, you're three centimeters dilated, things like that. How do they check? Well, the nurses and the doctor are able to use their hands to check. So they're able to reach in, fill your cervix, and if it's only open, say, this far, then they'll say you're about three centimeters. If they can get four fingers in, you're about four centimeters, five centimeters. Now, after that, you have to start kind of spreading them a little bit, you know, just kind of getting a feel for how, how open it is for, you know, six through 10. But if you've ever wondered how that happens, like how do they know when you're 10 centimeters dilated? Well, that's about the span of your hand. So, centimeter, a decimeter, that's about 10 centimeters. So that's about a hand span. That's like your relaxed hand is kind of open like that. So yeah, your cervix dilates to be about that big. You're welcome for that uncomfortable moment. Fun fact, I, I don't know if this is true. You know, the, the internet's a dangerous thing. I made the mistake of Googling the origin of how chainsaws were invented. And I'm like, it's to cut down trees. Y'all, it wasn't to cut down trees. Chainsaw was invented by, by um, a, 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 an OBGYN to like cut bones when women were giving birth to babies that were say like, you know, breech or turned wrong or something. And yeah, it made, it was like this knife with a, just Google it, trust me. Google it and then just get really uncomfortable with me on this. Because <laughs> I was not okay when I looked at that, of that image of that knife with like this weird chain attached to it. Anyway, whoo, okay. That note, <laughs> one meter. How far is a meter? Well, I'm about five five. And a meter is about from my waist to the floor. So I think I'm almost exactly a meter. So depending on how tall you are, you know, if you're kind of average height, then it's probably about that. Um, a meter is also close to a yard. So if you know how long a yardstick is, you've probably seen a meter stick as well. So those are pretty close together. Now, converting among metric units is super easy. We're just going to use those stair steps from the previous page, okay? Because the metric system is based on powers of 10, we're going to convert by simply moving the decimal point. None of this conversion factor multiplying, none of that crap, okay? This is about to be the easiest thing you've seen all day. So, kilometers to meters. Now, I just kind of shortened the stair steps from a couple pages ago here. So, Here's all the prefixes. If I'm moving from kilo to meters, I'm starting here at kilometers and I'm going down one, two, three units. I'm moving to the right, so I'm gonna move the decimal point in this number to the right one, two, three places. 
Now, where is the decimal in this? Well, if there's not a decimal point written, it's assumed to be to the right of that number. So three is the same as 3.0. So moving this decimal to the right, one, two, three. And then I make these little dips so that it's obvious how many zeros I need. So this puts my decimal point right there at the end and gives me three with one, two, three zeros afterwards, 3,000 meters. Your book tends to have you use conversion factors for this and say, oh, well, 1,000 meters is a kilometer. Um, I mean, yeah, you could do that, but Darn it, if this stair step thing is not just the, the easiest thing that you that you see. Oh, look, I did write the answer. <laughs> I'm looking at this right here, and I'm like, why didn't I write the answer? That's just weird. I did. I'm just a spaz. That's okay. Oh, you guys can be spazzes, too. I don't mind. Do, 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 do. Pretend this never happened. Okay, cool. So, 700 centimeters to hectometers. Now, where's the decimal point? It is to the right of that number. There's no decimal written, there it is. How am I moving and which way? How many places and which way? We're starting at centimeters. Don't count this. This is where you're starting. And then I'm moving to hectometers. So starting at centi, centimeters here, I'm going to move to the left. One, two, three, four places. Okay, don't, count, don't count this one. Don't count your starting. That's where you're starting. So just count how many you have to move. One, two, three, four. So I need to move four places to the left. One, two, three, four. My decimal point ends up right there. Any empty dips get filled in with zeros. So I get decimal point zero seven zero zero hectometers, or you can more simply write that as point zero seven hectometers. You don't need those zeros right there. Those are not important. This zero right here, between the decimal and the seven, totally important. Very, very important. This leading zero here, not super important, just more of a good habit to get into. That way you can tell that that is in fact a decimal point and not a stray mark on your page. All right, so I moved four places to the left. Point five three decimeters. Here, there's the decimal right there. For the other ones, the decimal was assumed to be right there at the end. Here's my decimal point. I'm going from decimeters to meters. Be careful, don't get that confused with decameters. We're going from decimeters to meters. Okay, so we start right here at decimeter, and we have to move to the left one place. So that's gonna be an easy peasy lemon squeezy move. We're going to move to the left one place. That gives me an answer of 0 0.053 meters. So I'm going to move to the left one place value. Everything comes back to these stair steps. Okay, so Pause the video, write those down, and then see if you can convert those. Okay, let's flip back and look at our stair steps. So we're going from meters to kilometers. To meters, we're going to start here. We're going to go to the left, one, two, three places. So I need to move to the left three places. There's the decimal point that I didn't have to write. Left three, one, two, three, fill in that with a zero. 
and we get 0 0.074 kilometers. I always wonder, I always wonder about, um, like I say kilometers, I don't say kilometers, um, but I know people say that, which is really weird because like I, they don't, they say millimeters, they don't say millimeters or centimeters or moters, right? So why kilometers? Uh, hmm. Random thoughts from Tara. 31.2 millimeters to decameters. Millimeter is here. Decameters over here. So we got to move to the left. One, two, three, four places. One, two, three, four places. Decimal point ends up there. We have two spaces to fill in with zeros. So we have my leading zero. And then two zeros, three, one, two, decameters. Don't round these. If you're putting these answers in my lab, don't get lazy and put point zero zero three because it'll say, oh, no, that's wrong. Yeah. So just go ahead and put all the decimal places in there. Now, conversions between English and metric. One inch is about 2.54 centimeters, and three miles is about five kilometers. You pro you might know this one um, if you if you run like 5Ks or 10Ks or anything like that. Then you probably know that a 5K is about like 3.1 miles. No. So we're going to make use of these as conversion factors to convert from English to metric here. So we're going to start off with two feet, and I want to convert that to centimeters. I don't know how many centimeters are in a foot, but I do know how many feet are in an inch. Or sorry, how many inches are in a foot. I mean, sorry about that. I know that one foot is 12 inches. Now the benefit of doing that is that I've now gotten rid of the unit of feet. Now I have the unit of inches. I can then convert the inches to centimeters with this conversion factor. That one inch is about 2.54 centimeters. Now remember, it's not random about why I put like the 12 on the top and the one on the bottom here. And sometimes I put the one foot and the 12 inches. Sometimes I flip them around. It's not random. I'm following the units. So I knew I could get from inches to centimeters. So I got my feet changed to inches, so those feet cancel. Then I have my conversion between inches and centimeters. So now inches on the top, inches on the bottom, that goes away. I'm going to multiply 2 times 12, so that's 24 times 2.54. And I get 60.96 centimeters. One more of these. How about 100 kilometers to miles? Well, we said that a 5K, right, 5 kilometers is about 3 miles. Ah, I did that in black. I should have done it in blue to keep with my theme. It's not wrong. Don't erase if you're you're writing along with me. That wasn't wrong. I'm just neurotic enough that I want to keep my color scheme going. So I want to keep, you know, make sure that those conversion factors are in um, blue. So my units of kilometers are gone. So I'm going to take 300, 100 times 3, and then divide it by 5. So I think that's going to be 60. So this is, so this, the reason I picked that number, that specific number of 100 kilometers is because um, my, I remember when one of my kids was kind of young 
and they were messing around in my car. It was parked, you know, in the garage, and they were just, like, messing around in the front seat. Um, and somehow they changed my units from, <laughs> from English to metric. And I remember going down the road and being like, I'm doing 100? What the what? And I'm, like, panicking and stuff before I realized that I was only doing 60 miles per hour, that it was in metric. So it was 100 kilometers per hour. No. Yeah, so anyway, there's that story. Just something to keep you guys entertained because we're 40 minutes in and why wouldn't you be already entertained by all this good stuff? We're almost done. Okay, 9 out of 13. We're getting there. I know this is super long, so bear with me. The perimeter of a polygon is the sum, that means add them up, of the lengths of the sides. Look at the word perimeter. It's telling you what to do. Look, the word rim as an edge, right? Like the rim of a basketball goal, the edge of it. So if you're looking at, say, a rectangle, the perimeter is this outside distance. The area is the inside. The perimeter, so if you think about a, a floor, the perimeter is the baseboards, right? It's the amount of baseboard that you need to run the length and the width of the room. The area is the flooring that you need either like wood flooring or a rug or carpet or whatever. Like think about like an area rug. Okay, so let's find the perimeter. It looks like I didn't give you enough information, but yet I did give you enough information. Because I gave you those right angles in there, you know that this is a rectangle because of those right angles in there. So we know that both of these are eight, both of those are two. So adding those sides up, we get 8 plus 2 plus 8 plus 2, and that's a very easy add, right? Because it's 10 plus 10, so that is 20 centimeters. All right, B. How do we find the perimeter of this triangle? Well, notice those little tick marks in there. That is the sign that these sides are all congruent. So that means this is an equilateral triangle with all sides being 5. So the perimeter is 5 plus 5 plus 5, or 5 times 3 is 15 inches. All right, this thing right here, that's a hot mess. All right, we just got to add them all up. Okay, so the perimeter. Let's just pick a place to start. So with this one, it's important that you know where you start so that you don't accidentally count something twice. So I'm just going to put a little dot right here as my starting point. So I'm going to add up 2, so 2, 3, another 3, 4, 6, 2, 1.5, and then that little segment down there of 1. I'm back to where I started. It's a, I think it's a good habit to get into to mark where you start so that you don't accidentally count something twice. All right, so what is that? 5, 8, 12, 18, 20, 2.5 units. I didn't give you any units, so I hope that's right. Let me add those real quick. 3, 6... 10, 16, 18, 20, 21, 22.5, yeah. All right, what's the perimeter of a regular 23 gon with a side length of X? All right, there's a lot of information in here. Regular, this does not mean just your average, everyday, you know, cool guy 23 gon. No, 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 this actually means that all the sides are congruent and all the angles, all the interior angles are congruent. This tells you how many sides it has. Each side length is X units. So you're going to have X on all the sides. So all those sides are congruent. So we're going to have X added up 23 times. Well, that's easier to write as just 23 times x. All 
Okay, circles. Circle is the set of all points in a plane. They're the same distance from a fixed point called the center. The circumference is the special name of the perimeter of a circle. And it can be written as either pi times the diameter or 2 pi r. That's because the diameter is the same as twice the radius. Okay, so as I drew down here, the radius is from the center to any point on the circle. The diameter is that full distance going through the center. So these are the same formula, just the diameter is the same as 2 times the radius. Pi is a constant, okay, and it's specifically the ratio of a circle's circumference to its diameter. If you take any circle, no matter what size, big or small, every single one of them, if you measure its circumference and you divide it by its diameter, you always get the same number. And that's what we've given the name pi to. Now, pi, you want to use the pi button on your calculator. So on this calculator, it's right here. See it right there above that little up arrow, that little caret symbol? Don't just use 3. Don't use 3.14. Use the actual pi. A lot of times in my lab, it'll just ask you to leave pi in your answer. That's fine too. All right, and then we have arc length. The arc length right here is the length of an arc of a circle. That arc length is pi times r. Now that little zero with a line through it is the Greek letter theta. That is a very common Greek letter that we use to represent angles. When it comes to angles, we tend to use Greek letters for those. So the arc length can be given by the formula pi r theta divided by 180. Now really what it is, is because it's a fraction of that total distance around. It's just a fraction of the total circumference. So if you take the circumference of 2 pi r, and then you take that fraction of it, whatever theta happens to be out of 360, that's 360 is one circle, then you get this formula, because 2 into 360 goes 180 times. So that's where that formula comes from. All right. Find the circumference of a circle with radius 2 meters. So the circumference... I tend to use the formula 2 pi r. You can use pi times d, but since I'm given the radius, I think 2 pi r is a good choice for this one. My radius is 2, so I'm going to have 2 times pi times 2. I think I'll put that 2 in parentheses just to show you that that was r. So that's the same thing as 4 pi meters. Most of these in my lab are going to say just leave pi in your answer. That means you can just multiply around it, you know, because this is all multiplication by the associative property, remember that from Math 200, you can, you know, multiply these in any order. All right, let's find the radius of a circle that has a circumference of 15 pi. So using c equals 2 pi r, this time, though, I'm going to replace C. You know, last time I was given the radius. So this becomes 15 pi equals 2 times pi times r. How do I solve this equation for r? Well, let's think back to equation solving. Right? Because this is multiplication by r, we're going to solve this by dividing. So let me just grab a different color here. I'm going to divide both sides by 2 pi. Those 2's will cancel. Those pi's will cancel. Over here, the pi's will cancel. And I get that r is equal to 15 halves meters, or 7 and a half meters. Find the length of a 25 degree arc of a circle with a diameter of 10 centimeters. All right, let's look back over here 
for this arc length formula. We have L equals pi r theta over 180. This 25 degrees is my theta, because that 180 is actually in degrees. I should probably put that on there. The 10 is not your r. Because it says there's a diameter of 10, this means, this is whispering a little sweet nothings to you, that the radius is half of that. over here, the radius is half of the diameter. So that 5 is going to go right there. So I get my arc length is going to be pi times 5 times 25 degrees over 180 degrees. My degree symbols are going to cancel. I'm going to leave pi in my answer. So I'm just going to take 5 times 25, and then I'm going to divide that by 180. I'm going to make that a fraction, and I get that L is 25 over 36 pi centimeters long. I just chose to leave it as a fraction there, since I left the other one as a fraction. So it's just a matter of plug and chug here, but knowing what to plug, you know, and how to chug. All right, we are creeping up on an hour, and this is the last example. Whoo! Find the radius of an arc whose central angle is 87 degrees and whose arc length is 154 centimeters. So we have that arc length formula, which I do not have memorized. Pi r theta over 180 degrees. The 87 is my angle. This 154, not the radius, not the diameter, oh no nay. It is the arc length. So we have 154 equals pi times r times 87 degrees over 180 degrees. It's about to get messy. I want to solve that for R. Now, this is not as bad as it looks. All right, I'm not going to leave pi in here because this is a hot mess. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take all of that and I'm going to simplify that. So I'm going to take pi times 87 and divide it by 180. So I just did pi, so pi times 87, took that answer, divided it by 180, so I got that decimal. That tells me that 154 is about 1.518436 times r. Now, and let me just color code this here. So I simplified all that circled garbage to be this. Now to solve this, I'm going to divide both sides by that number. Now notice that I did not round it. Right? I took it out a whole bunch of decimal places, but I'm still not even going to round it. Not even to that. Because we don't want any kind of rounding error. So if we divide by that number, we divide 154 divided by that number. So look, that number's still in my calculator. So watch what I'm going to do. I'm going to take 154 divided by, I'm not going to retype that number. I don't want to take a chance of making a mistake, and I sure do not want to round that to be 1.5, because then you'll get a rounding error. So here's what I'm going to do. To paste that previous answer in here, I'm going to hit second and then the negative button down here. See where it says ANS in blue? So it pastes 
the previous answer in there. Right, so that gives me R is about 101.42. So you want to be really careful with rounding. You don't want to round along the way and then round at the end as well. That's what's called a compounding rounding error. Instead, you want to try to keep everything as exact as possible along the way. So. Okay, just shy of one hour. I'm really sorry. I know this section was really long. I probably should have broke it up into two videos. Um, I didn't realize it until it was too late, and I looked over at the timer and was like, oh, that explains why I'm tired of hearing myself talk. All right, that does end section 13.1.